Good afternoon, this is Dr. Dan Guerra coming to you from Verev Med Studios in association with Authentic Biochemistry, my new podcast. Today I'd like to talk to you about uh, a topic that is going to uh, move away from our general discussion from the last five lectures, which has been on neurodegeneration, and to talk a little bit about clinical correlations relative to new technology. Technology has actually been around a while, um, probably at least a decade. But the technology that we're going to um, introduce today will also show you the most recent um, advances. And so we're, let's just get started so that we're not um, dithering around. Anyway, that's me. I'm Dr. Dan Guerra. And um, this uh, is a, an installation of a lecture from Verev Med and from Authentic Biochemistry, as I said. Today is the 3rd of April, 2019. There's my email address, and there is my Facebook page where you can find all these videos. So let's just get started. I'm going to talk about chimeric antigen receptor T cells, also known as CAR T cells, and the anti-tumor paradigm. This comes from a paper published in Signal Transduction Targeted Therapy, Volume 4, Article 7. It was just published about a week ago, 2019, just in mar late March. So let's go through this. The chimeric antigen receptor T, or CAR T cells, are molecularly engineered cytotoxic T lymphocytes, a specific subclass of T lymphocytes, with a pre-programmed recognition specificity and targeted anti-tumor agency. So these are going to be uh, T cells are going to be engineered in vitro and then reintroduced to the host, to the patient. So CAR T cells have been successfully deployed in many hematologic malignancies, but not so much in solid tumors or organ-based systems. And that's because there's always an opposing immune microenvironment there. And that opposing immune microenvironment is generated by the tumor itself it neutralizes things like cytotoxic T cells because it causes immune suppression. So to overcome that immune suppression that I just introduced, they have added a programmed cell death protein one antibody, which is expressed in the CAR T cell lineage. That can restore CAR T cell viability and indeed anti-tumor potency. For example, CAR T cells combine with an immunotherapeutic checkpoint inhibiting secreted peptide variable domain of the PD-1, program death one, blocking antibody, can better, uh, can better anti-tumor CAR T cell potency than the full length antagonist. Okay, so just using a peptide, um, which has been known to induce a stronger binding to the receptor for the PD-1 receptor, can enhance the specificity and the uh, efficiency of the CAR T cells when they are expressing that antigen peptide, which links up to the PD. So since soluble transforming growth factor, beta TGF, also reduces T cell activation, the deployment of a signal switch receptor comprising the TGF binding ectodomain, that's going to be extracellular, with the T cell activation endodomain that's going to be interacting with the cytoplasm of the T cell. Also has been shown to enhance CAR T cell uh, anti-tumor potency, anti-tumor potency. So the suppressive immune cells represent another obstacle for CAR T cell therapy. So those are two things, the EGF beta, which we are removing by deploying a signal switch receptor which binds to the TGF and basically neutralizes it. We talked about the PD-1 blocking. The third component here for these highly engineered CAR T cells <coughs> works with all the other cells that are in the microenvironment of the tumor, the solid tumor. So with an enforced expression of interleukin-18, CAR T cells are more active against tumors by decreasing the population of the suppressor T reg cells, the T regulatory cells, which normally suppress its cytotoxic T cells. 
Not only that, IL-18 expression also will reduce the M2 macrophage lineage. And you know, those are immunosuppressive, whereas M1 macrophages are immunoinducing and cause inflammation. So it's three different ways of enhancing CAR T cell activity. So let's take a look at this. Uh, first of all, it's CAR T technology. This comes from this particular link here. You can see it, you can go to it. Um, in the clinic, the white blood cells, um, including the T cells, are separated out and the rest of the blood is returned to the patient. Okay, so, they, so you draw blood, you take out these T cells. Now in the lab, you're gonna manufacture these CAR T cells. Remember, they're gonna be chimeric antigen receptor cells. So inactive virus is used using an adenovirus and it in introduces genes into the T cell, which is shown here. <laughs> For example, the receptor. The genes cause the T cells to make a special type of receptor, which is the chimeric one, specifically to tumors, tumor antigens. The modified T cells are now called CAR T and they're multiplied in vitro, right? Then the CAR T cells are put back into the patient, okay? Uh, you can add it directly to the blood or you can graft it into uh, the marrow. And typically uh, after chemotherapy is this regimen of anti-tumor activity utilized. After chemotherapy has failed or after chemotherapy has taken a rest, been on a holiday for a while, CAR T cells can be deployed. Okay. Uh, okay, then finally in the body, you have a cancer cell and there's the CAR T cells, these blue cells with these specific receptors, the CAR receptor. The receptors are attracted to the targets on the surface of the cancer cells. The CAR T cells identify the cancer uh, and they kill them because remember these are cytotoxic T cells. So again, this just explains what I just told you. Um, here's another website. This comes from cancer.gov, it's a government site, showing you basically the same thing. Remove blood, you get the T cells. Um, you make the CAR T cells in the lab, you insert various genes. I told you we introduced three more besides that uh, CAR. There's the CAR though, just shown there. You grow millions of them, you infuse them back into the patient. And again, you've got antigens on the surface of the cancer cell that are specific to the uh, chimeric antigen receptor. And that's how CAR T cell therapy is supposed to work. Now, the problem with deploying this out in the field, in the clinic, is that there's been a great immunosuppression because tumors like to immunosuppress in their local area, in their environment. So with engineering, the PD-1, uh, the IL-18, and the TGF-beta inhibition, we're able to reduce the amount of immunosuppression uh, and also uh, maintain T cell activation, not going to terminal cell differentiation. And with all of that then, enhance the CAR T cell effect, therefore ablating the tumor. So this comes from that paper. Um, there's the more of the specific, uh, this comes from a 2016 paper, paper, excuse me, from molecular therapy. Here shows you now um, what happens when you have a T cell and the activity is low because you have MHC class one binding to antigen, binding to the T cell receptor, that's all good. But here you have the program death ligand on the tumor cell binding to the program uh, death uh, ligand receptor on the T cell. What that does is it lowers T cell activity, it increases tumor cell survival, and it also allows for angiogenesis, all of which is bad because that, do, that enhances the oncogenic uh, system. Now, when you add the anti-PDL1, okay, when you add that gene, that's supposed to be the DNA added now to uh, the T cell, okay? So you added this anti-PDL1, it inhibits the cancer cell from blocking or immune suppressing or causing the T cell to lose efficiency and activity. Now you get T cell activity going up and proliferation increasing, tumor cell survivor declining and angiogenesis also declining. So the it's an aptamer for this program death ligand one and it blocks the program death one uh, receptor interaction, attenuates T cell suppression basically. So you get an induced expression also of cytokines such as interleukin-2, TNF-alpha, interferon gamma, the chemokine CX, uh, CL9 and 10, and those all collectively contribute to the suppression effects on intra 
tumoral microvessel formation and tumor cell survival. So what you're doing is you're altering the expression of cytokines causing pro-inflammation and diminishing the cytokines that would normally be turned on to cause immunosuppression because you've blocked the PD-1. <clears throat> so here, once again, is showing you all the potential receptors that are on the surface of the T cell. Here, we're specifically looking at the co-stimulatory domain of CD28, also called the 41BB. That's right here on the CAR. There's your chimeric receptor. You see that? This is, these are components now that are going to interact with that cytosolic arm of the CAR, T, of the CAR gene. There's the T cell receptor. And the T cell receptor is also going to be interacting, but in a way that's going to inhibit SHIP1 from causing immunosuppression. So all of these genes normally expressed are going to suppress T cell activation, the PD-1, the CTLA-4, TIM-3, LAG-3, and the A2AR. So let's read this through. The structure of the second generation chimeric antigen receptor right here and examples of all the immune checkpoints that are now being confronted. So the second generation CAR is composed of a single chain FV domain targeting tumor cells. There's a hinge and a transmembrane domain along with the CD28 or the 41BB that's shown here. Okay. It's also a CD3 zeta co-stimulatory domain. That's the red. T cell receptor kinases lack, like L LCK and ZAP70, relay the activation signal of the T cell receptor and the CAR once antigen dependent receptor mediated binding has happened. So it's, a depend it's dependent on antigen of the tumor binding. That clustering now occurs between the chimeric receptor and the T cell receptor. That's necessary for the CAR T cells to function, the clustering of those domains. So inhibitory molecules include the CERC homology 2 domain that's shown right there that would inhibit, and that's going to be interacting from that PD-1 binding. That's not going to happen any longer. And these other proteins, CTLA-4, et cetera, TIM, and the adenosine 2A receptor also are all going to try to suppress T cell activation. And all of these are now being confronted and ablated by various genes that are now going to be introduced to the CAR T cells. So we want to maintain the functionality of CAR T after introduction. The less differentiated CAR T cells are more persistent, but during in vitro expansion, that part after you've introduced the genes, many become terminally differentiated. It's not what you want. You want basically cells that are able to divide once they get inside the host. So to enhance the proliferative population of the CAR Ts, stem cell-like or memory phenotype is necessary. And that's provided via specific in vitro supplementation with a couple of cytokines, IL-7 and 15, that's going to maintain these T cells in a uh, non-terminally differentiated state. So they're able to be most, most, both activated and be able to differentiate appropriately as anti-tumor agents, as cytotoxic T cells. Further supplementation with a PI3 kinase, uh, delta antagonist, shows promise of preserving memory subsets because you want to have some T-cell memory generated during the CAR T-cell expansion. So you not only want the T-cells to be of the effector class or the helper class, you also want T-mem class from these cytotoxic T-cells. Alternatively, an infusion with naive T-cells, which subsequently differentiate in vivo, may improve the efficacy of the therapy in a clinical setting. So we may even start with naive T cells that had not already gone through part of their differentiation. This is yet another technology that's coming forward. So here's some new advances in CAR T cell efficacy. Now remember, autoimmunity can be avoided via the expression of T cell suppressors. That's why T cell is suppressed to block autoimmunity. This is in a healthy patient or even in a patient with a tumor uh, who otherwise might have an autoimmune response that can be ablated by having a suppressive environment. So those suppressors function as transcription factors, of course, to limit the intensity and interval of T cell activation. That's why the, that's why the autoimmunity system is, is there, okay, and also how the autoimmune response is suppressed 
so that you don't become autoimmune to host antigens, for example. Furthermore, there's an increase in the expression of inhibitory receptors that induce terminal CAR T cell differentiation or down-regulating secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines. That's another thing that's bad for the old CAR T cell technology, as we've been saying. Transcription factors, in fact, are called NR4A1 and A2 and A3. They all drive T cell dysfunction, where they play an essential role in mediating the CD8 T cell lineage exhaustion. And when they are lacking, effector T cells functionality is obtained. So there are uh, antibodies we can generate to all of those transcription factors to cause those to no longer be functional, right? To suppress those suppressors, therefore enhancing T cell, cytotoxic T cell activity in the CAR T cell lineage. So the idea is to remove this immune suppressive state and rather to elevate CAR T cell activation and differentiation into the T helper T effector lineages and also T memory, as I said, to be both potent and specific anti-tumor immunotherapeutics. Now, I'll mention one more thing before we close, because it's just a short talk. There are links perhaps to other pathologies that have been suggested. Uh, what about reified anti-suppression of the innate immune system? Okay, anti-suppression of the innate immune system. Now, according to a paper I found in Nature Medicine published back in 2016, a suppressed immune state in a rodent Alzheimer's disease model, so I'm bringing back the, what we're doing in the last five lectures, just at the very end of this talk. A suppress, this is, in fact, how I got into talking about CAR T cells because I found this as, a, as an association when I was doing my dia event ontologic perspective of understanding Alzheimer's disease and other biochemical phenomena that were prodromally to introduce it and cause the disease to occur in humans. Came upon this CAR T cell discussion. So anyways, according to a paper published like three years ago, um, this is a rodent model now, so it's not exactly the human model, of course. You can overcome a suppressed immune state by a monoclonal antibody to the as an anti-PD-1. We just were talking about that, right? Presumably that allows for macrophage entry. So not only you have T cell activation, but you can also get macrophage entry and a clearance of the A beta plaque formation, which as you know, is, a, is an indicator, but not a cause of Alzheimer's disease. And even some suggest for enhancement of rodent rec, uh, cognition after the introduction of the system. Now, again, this is rodent cognition, not human. So you can take that with um, a bit of uh, cheese. The problem is that neurodegeneration is at least partially an immune-based hyperactivity. This is what I'm suggesting. So removing suppression could actually enhance CNS damage because you are getting neurodegeneration. Remember, we talked all about that with the ceramide-mediated pro-inflammatory cytokines, the exhaustion of ATP, the utilization of ketone bodies, the reactive oxygen being generated in the neurons, and also the astrocytes and the, and the associated oligodendrocytes, the sphingomyelin degradation, et cetera. So this is what I'm bringing back into, into like basically make a counterpoint to that 2016 paper in um, nature medicine. So this whole idea of using CAR T cells is going to require some very careful hypothetical deduction and several well-controlled experiments are going to be performed in the animal model for sure with an extensive time component. It's probably going to take several years before they get this technology, this CAR T cell te technology against neurodegeneration, but it's possible it could be deployed. But before those claims, I think it'd be advanced. Now, I've been trying to look for papers more recently published, and there are some review articles of papers published between 2016 and 2018. So they're all sort of looking at this rat model, this Alzheimer's disease model. They are trying to look at ways to enhance the removal of the neurodegenerative cells and therefore decrease the, the, the um, population of those cells therefore inhibiting the amount of pro-inflammatory cytokines that they may be signaling, causing further adjacent or associative neurodegeneration. I think that's the idea. So we're going to stop there. That was all I wanted to talk to you today about, just this brief CAR T cell, uh, so you know a little bit more about uh, this technology, and also to tell you about the very newest trends in it, published in that paper just last week, in the clinical associated paper that I showed you the uh, link to. So again, that's me. There's my email address. You can contact me directly over for this talk or any other talk you see. 
Next time, I'm going to be doing a podcast on my authentic biochemistry line. And we're going to be probably talking, taking on a new topic, but we'll certainly reflect back to the things we've discussed before. So let's go ahead and do our normal sign off. And our normal sign off for me is. <laughs>